we realized that the on-site manager was actually fully turning units that didn't need yeah. full turns. She was spending way too much money in the units. And at that point, we had spent a lot of money. We said, hey, this is not what we wanted. And we had to go and reevaluate once we realized that was happening. Welcome to another episode of the Adventures of a Real Estate Investor. I'm Susie. And I'm Michael. And this is Rufus. <laughs> yes. Well, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, you could see him on my shoulders. He's a little nut. Ball of joy. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, welcome to episode seven of season three, which is actually episode 124 in the grand scheme of things. And in today's episode, we're going to talk all about CapEx or capital expenditure tracking. Mm hmm and unit turn tracking and the importance of that. So multifamily investing isn't just about acquiring properties. It's about maximizing their potential. That's what we want. We want it for our kids, for our pets, for our partners. We also want it for our properties. And so effective asset management hinges on meticulous tracking of capital expenditures and unit turnovers. And no, it is not just enough for to get like an average from your property manager every month. There is so much more detail that goes into it. Absolutely. And that is what sets apart mediocre asset management with excellent or great asset management, right? Being able to track these little things and understanding how they really impact the bottom line. So throughout the episode, we're going to talk a lot about this, but I'm also going to show you some things here in a little bit as well. So if you're listening to this uh, and you're like, man, I don't understand what he's showing, go to our YouTube channel, The Adventures of Real Estate Investor, and you'll be able to watch this episode and you can see all the cool things I'm going to show you throughout the show. But anyway, so there's different types of capital expenditures, right? So you can spend money on repairs, renovations, and upgrades to other property. And it's yes. imperative that you review the financials every single month to make sure that the property manager is categorizing what is CapEx, you know, what is counted above the line, what is counted below the line, because this has implications when it comes to tax time as well, because some of these items can be depreciated, right? So you want to make sure that that is captured correctly on the profit and loss statement as well. Yeah, I mean, and even during the time that you are asset managing, it even all like, when it comes to refinancing the property or selling the property, right? Like it makes a big difference when you can say to the next potential owner that like, this is what I spent in CapEx, which also usually has like deferred maintenance and everything wrapped into it versus this is what the expenses were, right? Like if you're not categorizing them correctly, they can be coded as expenses. And then it's like, oh man, what is going on with this property when really that's not the case. Yeah. It's also very, very important as you're acquiring a property or as you're building a business plan to properly account for all the CapEx that's going to occur, right? Not only do you calculate uh, account for all that, but you also want to have a very, very significant contingency budget as well. Mm -hmm. And so typically 10% or so of your CapEx budget. What's a contingency budget? Great question, Susie. So contingency is usually a percentage of your total capital expenditure, right? So if you have a million dollars, and you want to do a 10% contingency, then of that million, you know, 100,000 of that is going to be used towards things that pop up, right? Like cost overruns, other renovations or other repairs or other upgrades that you might want to do for the property as well. I used to calculate in our underwriting 10%, but now I'm pushing that up to 20, even sometimes even 25%. As Which you is know. wild. Yeah. Wild. <laughs> like it's not, it's crazy things have happened in the last couple of years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like costs have changed. Various different things have changed, right? And by the time you get to doing your CapEx projects, maybe it's a, you don't execute everything in the first 60 days. I'd love to, to knock everything out 60 days and get and get running, but it's not, doesn't work like that, right? It's, it's a low, slow process, right? And so maybe you're getting everything done in like 18 months, 24 months down the road. Guess what? Prices change in that amount of time. Inflation, everybody, mm -hmm. right? So I mean, another huge thing with tracking the CapEx or even like, so that you can figure out a budget every month too, like why is this super important? Why is this huge? Well, one, if you run out of money before the business plan is complete, you have a problem. But two, like you can really see the value that the the residents are getting with the CapEx dollars. And that is really what you want long-term, right? It's always residents first. So that's what we want to kind of think about the end. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll probably share a couple of examples throughout this episode here, but one of the cool things that Susie and I do across our properties, one of the CapEx projects that we love to do, there's a lot, it's easy 
high ROI is adding in-unit washer and dryers. Yes, and so and the we, connection. Yeah, we so we add the connections and then we actually add the washer and dryers too as well. Because a lot of times they don't necessarily, where you put connections don't necessarily lend to an area where it's where they can get a side-by-side. And a lot of our properties are C-class, you know, C-plus class. A lot of those residents don't have their own washer and dryer and they're not going to purchase a set to then move around with them from unit to unit, right? As they continue to to do whatever they want to do. So we actually input them, put them into the units after we install the connections. And we've yeah. been able to achieve a hundred to hundred fifty dollar rent increases from just that one simple thing, right? And it probably cost us about somewhere around five thousand dollars a unit for the connection installs. But when you think about that, make sure you plan that out accordingly if you're going to do that. Because you got to think about plumbing, you got to think about electrical, you got to think about venting, venting. and you got to think about repairing all that so you have drywall repairs, and then you have to think about painting that as well. So there's a lot of things that go into it. It's just not throwing in some washer and dryer connections. You have to make sure all the trades come out in and bid. Properly, or you have some awesome person who can do all of it for you. Yeah, and even we've, we've built that relationship now. So, go yeah. ahead. and even just like a fun way to figure out if that's something that can happen in one of your apartments, we've always found that like a closet that bumps up to the bathroom is what works. And with stackables, you just still have a lot of room, right? At one of our properties, we were pretty fortunate where the main bedroom had two like walk in closets. So, it's like, oh, this is a no brainer. And they still have a ton of room in their closet. And then another one was just using the closet that was in inside the bathroom, right? Like there is storage outside the bathroom. And I mean, they're still under the sink storage and all of that. So I rather have a washer and dryer than and take away a little bit of my storage. Absolutely. So now that you've planned all your CapEx (laughs) and you know what projects and cool things you want to do with it in order to increase ROI and increase NOI and everything like that, the important next step is to track it, right? So great. You have a plan and now you want to execute it. We have to make sure that that plan is being executed, right? So I think a couple episodes ago, maybe it was the last episode, we talked all about our asset management software tool. So take a look at that episode. If you didn't listen to that, in there, we have all of our CapEx projects listed out in there. And that's how we track the completion of those. However, when we're talking about budgeting and tracking the completion of them financially, I track that in just Google Sheets. And then that allows us to share it throughout the GPs so everybody can take a look whenever they want. I can also share it with private equity lenders or family offices that we have on our properties that kind of take a look at it. And they can take a peek whenever they want to as well. Yep, peek behind the curtain, if you will. But that also allows me us to understand, okay, these are the units that are, that we've turned, you know, these this is the CapEx that we've spent from the interior, the exterior, and everything like that. I'll dig into that spreadsheet here in just a moment. But this really makes sure that, first of all, you're not overspending on your budget. Uh, and then this also makes sure that, you know, hey, if you have some unexpected CapEx items come up, such as sewer line replacements and things like that, you want to make sure that you have have it in your budget to be able to take care of those. And so tracking this meticulously allows you to really take a look. I mean, it also, right, like, so Michael did say, like, to make sure you are not overspending. It's also just not like you as an individual. It can be the property manager that's on site, the regional or the CEO, right? Like together, they, we all have to agree on the budget and make sure that no one is overspending at all times. Exactly. So I am going to share my screen. Okay. So on the screen here, you'll have, this is one of our properties, Brookwood on 86, CapEx plan here. And so all in the red across the top here. Basically, if you're listening to the podcast, I'm in a Google sheet here. Basically, I have all of the CapEx items that we planned on in our business plan listed. And so I have the priority repairs that came directly from the lender. So this is a agency loan. So there are priority repairs that they have, which has to get completed within a certain amount of time, right? And so like installing GFCI, soil erosion, things like that. So taking care of all that. And then I have interior upgrades. I kind of have everything broken out in interior upgrades and then exterior upgrades. And then I have a total and then our contingency, right? So this particular budget is for $800,000 budget for a for a 100 unit property. And basically I have it broken down where we're spending about $4,500 per unit as we're turning them for simplicity here. And then, and then I have some exterior upgrade things listed such as sewer line replacements, some tree trimming, parking lot repairs and things like that. And then from there, you know, that I have our budget listed. And then on the right hand side, I also have actual cost listed. And then basically there's other tabs here that feed into this sheet. So if you go into the interior CapEx tracking tab here, you will see that I have everything listed
listed here by unit number. So every month I have a list of all the information that's sent, excuse me, all the general ledger information that's sent to me for specific code items, such as contract cleaning, appliances, repairs, you know, appliance costs and things like that. Some of these, and then I know exactly how much it's costing us to turn each individual unit. And this is for interior stuff here. And then also this allows us to really take an understanding, okay, well, you know, when we turn this unit back in 2023, it cost us $5,000. Well, if we turn this unit again, why are we replacing the carpet again? Why are we replacing the, the countertops again? We can look into that. Oh, you know, why are we doing this? Why did we do this? Okay. Did we charge the resident back for those items? Because those things should still be intact a year later, right? And so that, that gives us a little bit more granularity into when we're turning units. And I know, okay, are we spending money in the right areas? Did, did the carpet need to be replaced at this point? You know, if it got replaced a year ago, was it actually destroyed? And if it was, it was the resident. Yeah. I mean, and it also gives like a lot of accountability for the on-site manager because when you're having your weekly calls and you're discussing KPIs, like more often than not, we have found that the property manager isn't really giving the right story about the residents, right? Like we can continuously ask every month, like what are happening with expenses? But if a manager isn't saying we have a lot of, I'm putting a lot of bad residents in because that's really what it is in the long run. Who is going to admit that? And so this is data, right? Like everything within the CapEx plan all has to do with data and what we're doing with the money and how we're going to save money using the data that we have. So it's just keeping a lot of people accountable so you can make sure that the dollars are going where they're supposed to instead of being wasted. Because if you do have high turnover or you have residents destroying apartments and they're already leaving or they're already getting evicted, so you know that bad debt's pretty much not going to get collected, you can really ask better questions on every single call. Absolutely. Again, so tracking interior unit turns, I track every single line item for every single unit. And then I know exactly how much it costs to turn every single unit. And then I can get an average cost of turns from there. I'll dig into that here in a moment. Another tab that I also have is other CapEx stuff. So that includes exterior things and then miscellaneous CapEx things. Those could be where we hired somebody to work on CapEx projects, things like that. So like that labor can then be capitalized as well. And then purchasing equipment and other things like that. And so some other miscellaneous things that we have, you know, like tree trimming, water conservation studies, roof repairs and stuff like that can be rolled in as well. And then everything kind of feeds back to this CapEx plan, the main tab, the CapEx plan. So I know exactly where our actual costs are and what our budgeted costs are and what the delta is currently. And every month I update this. Another tab here that the interior CapEx tab feeds into the unit turn because we're talking about unit turn tracking as well in this podcast, I look at, we track every single unit that, we, that we've touched, every single unit that we've turned as well. So we can know exactly, okay, what was the start date of the new lease? What was the turn cost? What was the previous rent? What was the new rent that we rented it out? And what was the increase in rent, right? And then I know what the ROI is in year one, you know, what we spent on that unit to get it turned, right? For example, here, I know if you're listening, you can't see this, but I would give an example. So we have a, a three bedroom, one and a half bath, got a new lease in July of 23. The turn cost was $5,300 roughly. The previous rent was $1,200. Our new rent was twelve sixty nine, so it was an increase of rent about sixty five bucks. So twelve oh four was a previous rent. So increase of rent sixty five bucks. We're also adding amenity fees with these as well, and so those amenity fees about one hundred twenty five bucks. Total cost increase with the amenity fee was one hundred ninety bucks. So our ROI based on just the rent increase is about fourteen point seven percent, and then the ROI plus the amenity fee is about forty three percent. So I track that for all the units that we've turned, and then I have a roll up here, here on the right hand side. So we know exactly how many units we've touched or turned, how many we haven't turned, how many we, we've turned, the total turn cost, and then the average cost per turn as well, and then the average ROI. So we can look at the average ROI based on just the unit turns and the rent increases. And then I also have get the ROI calculated in here, plus the amenity fees that we're adding as well. So this is amenity fees, if, if you're not aware. So those amenity fees include water, trash, pest control, A basically damage waiver. Dam- damage waiver, which is basically renter's insurance for them. And we kind of roll that up in one lump sum fees so we're not feeding them to death. That is a discussion for another podcast. We can talk about, you know, increasing additional income. But anyways, so as you can see here, our average ROI across 36 unit turns is about 100%, 100.9. And an average ROI plus the amenity fees that we're adding as well is about 336%, which is pretty cool to kind of get a snapshot of that. Hey, our money is going to where we want it to go here. It's awesome. Yeah. And then everything again, like I said, for the even for 
the unit turn tracking. Everything gets rolled up into the main tab here. And then I know exactly how much money we're spending on into your CapEx and then how much money we have left over to spend, right? Yeah. That's so, free cash flow for distributions. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and how much CapEx money we have left. Yeah. As well. Cool. Well, this is everything that we have for CapEx tracking, right? We talked about, like, we had some examples of projects you can add for CapEx, like the crucial role of CapEx tracking. You know, Michael went over the unit turn tracking. And so, also, if you do want that, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to send that to you if you ever want to see an example of it. And, like, I mentioned, like, the integral piece of when you're keeping like the CapEx dollars where they're supposed to be by keeping everyone accountable, like what that even does for resident satisfaction, because you can also, as Michael was mentioning, with, you know, the excess, put so much more back into the community and just create a great community for the residents. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. Because, you know, making sure that you can track your CapEx properly Mm -hmm. and make sure you have money to do all these things is really is going to ensure that you have a high resident retention, right? And people are going to be happy to be there. They see the work that you're putting in and they see that you can continue to fix things when problems come up, right? Making sure you have a healthy CapEx budget, not only making sure you have a healthy CapEx budget, make sure you're tracking it efficiently is also very, very important. So before we end the show, we have our new fun segment called Multifamily Myth Busters. And the myth today we have is that you don't have to track every detail of CapEx and unit turns and multifamily real estate because it's just another expense that doesn't significantly impact overall profitability. I mean, I love it, but I don't because this is what our whole podcast was on. No, (laughs) this is exactly why. Like we have heard this statement before, actually, and this is why it is our myth busters, because although it may seem CapEx is just unit turns and small expenses like in the grand scheme of the whole business plan, like neglecting all those things will start to stack up, right? Like the compounding effect occurs and can lead to significant financial losses in the long run, right? Like, so these expenses will add up and they can add up quickly, which is almost sometimes worse, but they will always directly impact your bottom line and your investment. And that's something you want to avoid. Happy property, happy investors, happy residents, happy staff, happy asset managers, all of the above. And one more thing before we let you go, here do have kind of like a case study, if you will, or a, an example of that we actually had to deal with. Actually making sure that you're tracking your CapEx on, on a monthly basis like this and checking a line item by line item also ensures that your on-site property manager and the regional understand what your business plan is. Yeah. Because we thought we had communicated the business plan before. This is a property, you know, this is like three years ago now, but we thought we had effectively communicated the business plan and we started executing. Well, when the financials kind of finally came through mm-hmm. after we first took over this property, it takes about 60 days for everything to two full months to kind of get caught up with everything. And by the time that had rolled around, we realized that the on-site manager was actually fully turning units that didn't need yeah. full turns. She was spending way too much money in the units. And at that point, we had spent a lot, a lot of money. And so that, you know, we said, hey, this is not what we wanted. And we had to go and reevaluate once we realized that was happening. So, you know, being able to track your CapEx, you'll be able to nip those issues in the bud really fast uh, and efficiently. And then you can, you know, revise your communication to the on-site and regional manager as well. Yeah. And just always, always, always over communicate with any of the podcasts that you listen to of ours. The feedback that we have gotten often from our listeners is that like we always hound on over communicating because that is so important. 100%. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I hope it sheds some light on the importance of CapEx tracking and tracking each individual individual unit and the amount you spend in each unit. Thank you so much for listening in. Thank you so much for being part of our adventurous family. And until next time, explore more adventure awaits.